major changes coming to Halo Infinite next week for Halo Infinite. Just announced by 343, we're talking about the network overhaul, a new anti-cheat system, new maps coming into the game for one of the most popular modes, and weapon tunings as well. So if you guys want to know everything, make sure to stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So save the date for March 19th as we're going to be getting a March update for Halo Infinite, bringing all these amazing changes that are going to significantly improve the gameplay experience. First thing they bring up is the new networking model coming into Halo Infinite. Now, from what we've heard, that this is basically taking the networking model from Halo 5 and bringing it over to Halo Infinite, but of course modifying it in a way to fit Halo Infinite a little bit better. And they don't really go much into details about like how this is going to be overall improving. Basically, for the most part, what you should understand when it comes to the new networking model for Halo Infinite is that that you'll be shot around corners less, your shots should be registering more, and removing desync from the game. Now, this update doesn't only just affect like how your shots register, this also affects map development in the game as well. We know that Forge is going to be the way moving forward when it comes to content coming into the game. Forgers literally have to develop their maps around desync so that if they want to have some cool elements that they want to have in a map but can't put it in because it causes desync, well, they have to remove it. If desync is no longer an issue, then we can really see some more creativity coming out of these maps from Halo Infinite Forgers. The community also brought up some interesting changes that come with this networking model, like some of the physics might be a little wonky, some shots might not register as expected, like the skewer and things like that. This was all brought up previously, and I'm sure three. 3 is well aware of these issues and maybe they have been alleviated but again in this blog that we are looking at right here they don't really go into much detail about what's really changing the issues that were brought up by the community or and or fixed but hey the networking model is coming also 67 percent of you people watching this channel are not subscribed if you want to stay updated with gaming well you know what to do then make sure to tap like for the video help out with the algorithm and let's get right back into those details we also have easy anti-cheat coming into the game now halo infinite does have an anti-cheat it's had an anti-cheat for the entire time i believe it was referred to as the arbiter in a way uh, but now they're completely changing to easy anti-cheat which is the same anti-cheat that the master chief collection uses and many other popular games out there like Apex Legends. Now there have been reports of cheaters within the Master Chief Collection kind of ruining an experience. Hopefully that doesn't transfer over easily into Halo Infinite. Again, we'll have to wait and see. Personally, from my experience, I haven't really come across cheaters at all in MCC or in Halo Infinite. I think it kind of comes with like the skill-based matchmaking. If you're a super high-end tiered player, like a 0.01% type of player, then you probably come across the cheaters very often. But I just don't really see that happening a lot with this, but possibly it could. Again, if things do come up when it comes to more cheaters in the game or something like that, I'll definitely let you guys know here on the channel. 343 also states that you should also use the in-game reporting feature or head over to Halo Support to submit a ticket if you find a player who is cheating. Some long-awaited new maps coming into the game as well for Squad Battle, which is one of the most popular modes of the game. I think personally my favorite version of what Big Team Battle is within Halo Infinite at the moment. And we got a lot of new maps, actually. It's looking pretty good. So we have a recreation of Halo Force Perdition and also Halo CE's PC version of Timberland coming into the game. We have seven new maps coming in for Squad Battle. Some of them are also actually vanilla maps, which is kind of interesting. But we have, like we said earlier, we have Perdition, Refuge, Timberland, Evolved, Rendezvous, Geyer, Harvest, and also Behemoth becoming a squad battle map, which is going to be, I think, a pretty fun chaos. And as it comes to any bit of Halo news, we did see leaks about this earlier coming out. Now, we do know that one of the maps being remade, again, like I said, is Perdition from Halo 4, a community favorite right there, and some other images. They did have, like, launch site mentioned in there as well. Maybe they renamed it for squad battles. Maybe it's not coming in. But as you can tell by some of the images, these are going to be awesome arenas to jump in and play around. The map Rendezvous is supposed to be kind of a remake of a firefight map from Halo 3 ODST being put in as a squad battle map, which is going to be really fun. I've also seen rumors of Tempest being brought in as a squad battle map, which would be amazing. Perfect map for that squad battle experience. Uh, like I said, we saw a launch site earlier, which I think actually would work out in squad battles. I'm not a big fan of the map, but maybe if you add more players, it'll kind of bump up the action a little bit on that one a little, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm actually really looking forward to Behemoth because I think Behemoth the CTF is probably one of the most fun modes to play in Halo Infinite. You just never really get a chance to play it, sadly. But if you're craving some more details about what's coming for squad battles, don't worry. A squad battle refresh blog will be dropping next week as well. Of course, we will cover that on the channel when it goes live to get some in-depth information. Next, we're going to be talking about the weapon tuning updates. We're getting a big patch when it comes to a lot of the weapons within Halo Infinite. Some weapons definitely need some love within the sandbox to kind of freshen things up a little bit. Now, nothing too crazy. The big one to look for is the hammer, but let's dive right into it. 
First thing we're gonna look at is the Bandit rifles, the Evo and the regular Bandit, saying that they increase the reload speed by 10%. Basically kind of helps speed up the gameplay a little bit. I think this probably might be a little bit more of a buff for the Bandit Evo as it's the main weapon that people use within ranked experience to kind of speed up that reload will definitely help speed up the gameplay a bit more as well. The Heat Wave is getting a nerf, but mainly to its aim assist. So then it won't be as effective over range. 343 sites that people have been kind of complaining that the range that they get hit with the Heat Wave is a little too much. So we're hopefully to decrease the aim assist a bit over range with this weapon will help kind of keep it in the place of like a longer range shotgun. You can still land shots at range with the same amount of damage. It's just that you'll have to be a little bit more manual with that aim. The plasma pistol is getting a buff, which I think this weapon desperately needed one for the longest time, but not exactly how I was hoping. Saying that a faster charge up times slightly decrease the fire rate of single shots. I think that was needed as a lot of times it was more effective to just do single fire shots on somebody than banking on the aim assist and the charge shot to taking down shields and a faster overheat as well so then you can't just spam so much i personally would like to see the heat seeking ability of the charge shot improved it's just way too easy to dodge that and i would love to see that improved but i don't really see that happening as it's been you know what three years now almost at this point we've had the plasma pistol and that has not been increased so i have a feeling this might be the final state of the plasma pistol but we'll have to wait and see i know so i know a lot of people want to see the plasma pistol have its vehicle disable ability brought back. I personally don't want to see that as we do have the shock damage put into the game, right? You got the sizzle sticks, you got the disruptor, you got the shock rifle. You have plenty of other ways to take out vehicles within the game. I think adding in the plasma pistol, while it would give it some more utility, I don't think lines up with the damage type that they have within the game at the moment. And there's again, there's ways to deal with vehicles already in the game. The stalker rifle is getting a nerf, saying decreasing the number of shots to overheat and slower venting rate per second. And 343 cited that the community has brought up to them that it's been a bit overperforming, which definitely if you can land the shots, it is very lethal with a three shot kill. It's super quick. And a weapon I know a lot of people have been wanting a buff for is the commando. It's actually coming into the game the increased close range friction so it should help out with that aim is just a little bit to keep you on target and less aggressive bloom which i think is the right move with this weapon i know a lot of people said to buff the damage to make it like one shot more effective i think in damage wise it's in a good spot i think the bloom is what really was affecting the weapons efficiency on the maps big changes coming for the gravity hammer here guys this has been a weapon that's been giving issues when it comes to the sandbox experience for the longest time and i think we might get the final state of the gravity hammer with this patch up update saying that they fixed the issue that was doubling the power of the gravity hammer and its variants and increased its original tuning by 1.5 times to allow for a better damage and knockback 343 states the gravity hammer's reign of terror is well not over you're still going to be soiling your armor breaches you turn around and only find a player speeding towards you with the grapple shot and gravity hammer already mid swing but it's not quite the boogeyman it has been recently. We have increased the damage and knockback of the Gravity Hammer and its variants to be 1.5 times its pre-season 5 strength. This places those values at a halfway point between what it was pre-season 5 and what it has been in the recent months. This clip was really making the rounds about what the Gravity Hammer experience was like. Sorry for the Twitter quality, but this is where the video is currently at. You can see how far away this player is with the Gravity Hammer and able to get that kill at the moment. Yeah, things definitely need to be tuned up or tuned down a little bit, I should say, with the Gravity Hammer. And we'll see how it does play out. Like I said, the Gravity Hammer has been a very tricky thing for 343 to balance properly within the sandbox of Halo Infinite. Again, like some of the physics were kind of off. The damage has been really weird. I think right now, as it was standing post season five patch, that if long as you're within damage range of the Gravity Hammer, you would take full damage from it, which doesn't really seem to make a whole lot of sense. You'd think to be a bit of a damage drop off, but it was kind of like an all or nothing kind of weapon. Hopefully with this patch update, it will put the weapon in a better place. Big change for Firefight coming in with this update as well. Now this isn't a King of the Hill Firefight matchmaking thing, but this could come in later in matchmaking, but have some matchmaking implications when it comes to Firefight with this update. That update being Firefight custom and what that actually means is that what they are going to do is that with firefight custom this is a blank firefight mode that keeps the high level structure of firefight king of the hill intact like sets lives skulls scoring custom game options but removes the logic related to hills in other words 
This is Firefight King of the Hill without King of the Hill. So a more classic experience with Firefight if people have been wanting that. Personally, I like the King of the Hill objective. If you want that more classic experience, this will give players that opportunity a little bit more. Also, new Forge node graph functions have been added to empower Forgers as well. As you can see, all these right here. I'm not much of a Forger, but again, just giving the Forge community more options, get then in turn give the community more content to play around with. So really great stuff there now lastly we have some quality of life improvements they don't really go in depth too much about this but basically saying that forgers will see some numerous fixes they said one in particular with noticeable updates will be improvements to copy protection for maps and modes so people won't be stealing content on there which is again very important and just general stability less crashes and things like that which is always in a constant wave of improvements needed for the game but that's pretty much the entirety of the update coming out next week again once it does go live once those blogs come out when it comes to the patch details what the maps really look like for that squad battle update we'll definitely cover that here on the channel as well i recently posted a video talking about my experience playing the battlefield classic collection and let me tell you it's like mcc launch level of bad and if you guys want to know more details about it check out that video right here and i'll catch you on the next one Peace out.